Hey guys, it's Chris with Better Editor, and today we are following up to our interview with Dallas Taylor from DeFacto Sound. If you haven't watched the interview already, go ahead and take a look. And if you have, and you're ready to put some of the tips that Dallas told us into practice, get ready because we're doing that today. So if you're ready to elevate your audio mixing game, stick around. All right, let's dig in. And the first thing that we need to do is open up our audio track mixer. So let's go to window and say audio track mixer and make sure you twirl open this little icon up here, this little arrow. Okay, then we're gonna go into our sequence. And what Dallas told us to do is start by cleaning up the sequence. Now, you can tell this is really short. It's 11 seconds long. There's not a lot going on, but we do have some narration, we have some sound effects, and we have some music. Let's take a quick listen to see what we're working with. Do you like to do things the hard way? Didn't think so. Here's to taking it easy. Okay, admittedly, it's really dumb, but it gets the point across for what we're trying to learn. So the first thing I wanna do is clean up what we can. Now there's no need to go and organize all of our tracks because they're already pretty well organized. We have our voiceover, our sound effects, and our music, just like we discussed. But what we can do is trim up some of this dead space in our dialogue and add some short fades to the beginning of the dialogue so that there aren't any pops as we play through. So I'll come here, trim this up to about there, do the same thing with this, and maybe there, whoop, and maybe there. And now I'm gonna add a short transition. Double click this, make it two frames, and then I'm gonna copy it. And I wanna paste that across all of the in and out points on my clips. And to do that, I'll hold control, click and drag, select those in and out points, and then hit control V. And now we have an easy transition on the beginning and end of all of my clips. The next thing I wanna do, just so it's easier to understand what we're looking at, is I'm going to color code all of the different types of audio we're working with. So I'm gonna grab my voiceover, go to label, we'll change this to iris, then I'll grab sound effects, whoop, didn't wanna do it that way. Grab sound effects, go to label, and say yellow. So now we can see the different tracks. And let's begin on cleaning up this dialogue. So to hear it more precisely, we're gonna solo the track, and play it back. Do you like to do things the hard way? Okay, so it's not the best recording, but that's a good thing to work from so that we can understand that we're making something better. So I'm gonna go up to this first audio track right here. And in the first slot, I'm gonna grab this and add a noise reduction filter. You can double click this and you can change this to different settings, but normally the default works pretty well. So we're gonna leave it there. And what the and what the denoise filter is gonna do is take out any errant fans or hissing or air sounds that's inside of our dialogue. The next thing I wanna do, because this was done with a relatively cheap microphone, is take out some of the reverb that is in the voice. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to filter, EQ, parametric EQ, and double click. Well, before we do that, let's set an in and an out point around this first portion of dialogue, and then turn on our loop playback. If you don't have this icon on your program window, go to the plus icon and you can add it from in here. So now, because loop playback is on, when we hit play, it's gonna play between the in and out points we selected in our sequence. So let's double click this and I'm gonna hit play. Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things? Then I'm gonna grab points in the EQ, focusing on the two to 3000 hertz range. Things the hard way. Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things the hard way? As I pull it up, did you hear how it got really distorted once it got up here? That's what we're looking for. That distortion is what we want to remove. So let's hit play again. Do you like to do and things I'm gonna drag the hard this way? All the way down. Do you like to do things the Now you'll see it has a very wide shape here and we wanna get rid of that trough and we really wanna hone in on this specific frequency. So I'm gonna change the cue or the width so it's a lot skinnier, something like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it again, focusing on the 100 to 300 hertz range. Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things? Somewhere around there, again, just bring it straight down. 
and we're going to thin it out a little bit. Okay, and that should help with a little bit do of the you reverb. you like to do things the hard way? Great. Next thing we're going to do on the dialogue is add another parametric EQ effect. And if we remember back to our interview with Dallas, he talked us through adding some clarity into our dialogue by manipulating a lot of these numbers and, you know, pushing and pulling things so that we have this really even flow. Well, the nice thing about Premiere is that preset is basically built in. If you go to presets and go to vocal enhancer, this is almost identical to what Dallas does when he starts cleaning up dialogue. So we're going to leave it just as it is. Easy. The last thing we're going to do with the dialogue is add a compressor to it. So go to Amplitude and Compression, hit Multiband Compressor, and double click. Now what I like to do with the compressor is come to Presets and start with Broadcast. Now if we play this back... Do you like to do things the hard way? You can tell that the dialogue got a lot louder. It's a lot clearer, but it's also a little distorted. So whenever I use the broadcast preset, it gets a little loud for my taste. So I come over to the gain and drop it to about negative six. The next thing I want to do is add a limiter. This adds a stop point so that our audio never goes over a certain threshold. So I'm going to turn this on and change our margin to negative two. Oh, negative two, not point two. And the last thing I'm going to do is come over here to around the 100 hertz range, and we're gonna drop this so that all of the frequencies that are under 100 hertz, we're gonna squish them so that they're almost not there anymore. So go to gain and say negative, uh, let's say negative five. That ought to be good. Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things the hard way? Okay, if we're looking at our audio levels in the top right, do things the hard way, do you like we can see that they're bouncing around the 15 to negative 18 range. We really want to bring that up. So I'm going to grab this and go to, let's say, negative two. Do you like to do things the hard way? Do you like to do things the hard way? All right, and that's about in the ballpark where we want it to be. So we're going to unsolo this track and clear our in and out points. Moving on, we need to focus on the mix. So we're going to talk about sound effects and music. Now, these are obviously a little loud. So, the first thing I want to do is add a couple of submixes. If you don't know what a submix is, go and check out my video on that. Link's in the top right. So, we'll go here, right click, and say Add Tracks. And we're going to go zero video, zero audio, and two submix tracks. So, our first submix tracks we'll call SFX, and our second one we'll do Music. Great. And on the Music track, let's start with that. So, I'm going to solo this out first. So let's see where our music is playing on our levels up here in the top right. Okay, so we're hitting around negative nine. That is very loud for music, especially when it's under voiceover. So I want to take that down to negative 21 to 18, somewhere in that range. So I'm going to drop this by negative, I don't know, seven decibels. I think that'll be a good start. And for the sound effects, let's see where they're sitting at. Okay, so this clearly gets a little loud. And I think we can do this a little manually here. So we're gonna drop there, maybe a couple more to get that mix going. And then I'm gonna drop this by negative two. Okay, so that should clean that up a little bit. Now we need to add some equalizer effects to our sound effects and our music. So I'm gonna focus on our music first. Go to parametric equalizer again double click, and this time we're going to make a scoop. The reason we're doing that is so we can bring up the low frequencies and the high frequencies while still removing a little bit of that stuff in between so there's more room for our dialogue. So to do that, I'm going to bring up my lower shelf. I'm going to make it tighter and bring that up to about negative five and do the same thing with my high frequencies about there. And then on my mid ranges, I'm going to go to about 500, bring that down to, I don't know, about negative three, and bring this down to about negative two, just to clean this up a little bit. So this is going to scoop out these middle frequencies. And now I want to move this same scoop over to my sound effects. So let's move it over here. 
If you're familiar with the submixes, you'll probably notice that I forgot to target my channels. So I'm gonna assign these. So these first two tracks, track two and three, I'm gonna assign to sound effects. And the music, tracks four and five. Okay, let's try that again and listen to the whole thing. Do you like to do things the hard way? Didn't think so. Here's to taking it easy. All right, so we're making progress. I think that our music is still a little bit loud and the sound effects are definitely a little bit loud. We can also probably pump up our dialogue a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna come over to our mix and I'm gonna give us a little boost in the dialogue. Bring this down to about negative nine and change this to negative four. And let's listen again. Do you like to do things the hard way? Didn't think so. Here's to taking it easy. All right, this is sounding pretty good. Now the last thing that I wanna show you is how to use a loudness radar to make sure it is actually as good as it sounds. So let's go back to the head of the sequence and then under our final overall mix tab, we're gonna come in here and say special loudness radar. Double click. So we'll go to settings and I wanna change our target loudness to negative 16 luffs because this is a video that could go on the internet. Now we'll change our radar speed to one minute and what the radar speed is, is it corresponds to the length of your timeline. So our timeline is about 11 seconds and we set our radar speed to one minute. So that means from this start point at 12 o'clock, going clockwise all the way around to 12 o'clock would take one minute. So because our sequence is 11 seconds, that means we're gonna stop somewhere in this neighborhood. So let's listen and watch and see what our audio is doing. Do you like to do things the hard way? Didn't think so. Here's to taking it easy. So this shows you exactly how our sound looks over the course of the timeline. Now this second ring right here is what we're aiming for. That is our negative 16 luffs. So this is a little bit quiet if we want it to be hitting that ring. Um, I think what I want to do is bring up our audio just a touch and then I'm going to bring up the overall mix a little bit as well. So we'll come here and I'm going to say about three decibels, go back to the beginning hit restart, and then do you like to do things the hard way? Didn't think so. Here's to taking it easy. And that is how you do a basic audio mix inside of Adobe Premiere. I hope you learned something today, and if you haven't already, go check out that interview with Dallas Taylor. It's a good one. See you next time.